Hello, Dumpsterinos, friends, family, lovers, and lifelong companions. This is my hospital video. I tried to film a little bit every day over my 10 days in the ICU at the Byrne Hospital so I could share that exciting experience with you. I assure you that this is not going to become the Burn Injury Channel. This is it. You had Frugal Daddy's video, you'll have this video, and then we won't speak of it again. We'll get back to all the fun stuff of saving the world one dumpster at a time. But I wanted to share all this with you. I wanted to go live from the hospital. Honestly, I wanted to do like daily updates and stuff, but I couldn't figure out how to do it with the technology I had available to me at the time. But this is the hospital video. So first, let me just say this is not a video for children. This is not child appropriate. If you are a child, this video is not for you. This is not a fun video. Don't watch this. Don't watch this. There's going to be some bad language, maybe. There might be some, just some topics. They're off-putting. And there are going to be some pictures of the burns. I know some people are totally grossed out by that. I, myself, totally grossed out by that. When I watch my 600-pound life and they show the surgery, uh, like... I can't watch that, but some people love that stuff. I mean, the gorier the better. Some people love it. So there are some pictures because I wanted to show you, you know, what what it all looked like. Otherwise, it's just me in the hospital gown. Ba da da, yada ba da ba da ba, yibbity babbity. But before we get into the hospital video, I want to say now, thank you so much to all of you for the amount of love and support you have offered to me and my family these past two weeks since this accident happened. It's unbelievable and it blows me away. And thank you so much to everybody who has donated to our GoFundMe fund, my little hospital bill fund. I, 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 I can't even begin to express my gratitude to people who have been willing to help us out financially with that bill because it just, I don't, I don't know that I even talk about it that much in the hospital video, but it's what I talked about like every moment of every day with every hospital staff person who I encountered. I talked about the bill and not having insurance and what am I going to do? And there were no answers. Um, and, um, it just, it, 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 it amazes me how generous you've all been, and I thank you so much, and I appreciate it so much, and I, I, can't, I, just, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate it, and I can never say thank you enough. It, it just means everything to us, and I, and I know... I, it makes me so uncomfortable to ask people for money. I'm sorry it's kind of long. It's taken me days to edit this. It's just... I get out of breath really fast. I'm in such bad shape now. But here's the hospital video, and kudos to anybody who makes it to the end. I love you guys. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back with the dumpster diving videos ASAP. Okay, bye. All right, here's the hospital stuff. It starts off with <laughs> the Lawrence Welk Show. It just kind of seemed funny to me that that's what I was watching on TV in the hospital. Here we go. Hi, Dumpstrinos and Frugalistas. I have been in the hospital. Well, I'm in the hospital now. I had a bit of an accident and it might be a little bit before I'm getting videos up regularly, but I will do my best, so hang in there. Don't leave me dumpsterinos. I was wearing this long, like, flouncy hippie skirt, and, you know, we have gas fireplaces in our house, and I backed up to the fireplace to warm up, and I think the heat of the fire um, got the, like, air kind of flowing around, and skirt went into the fire and it caught on fire. I couldn't get it off. 
you know how elastic deteriorates over time? I mean, this skirt I probably had for 20 or 30 years, so the elastic wasn't stretchy anymore. So to keep the skirt on, I used the, like the drawstring tie at my waist, and I couldn't get it undone because I had it tied like really tight to keep the skirt on. So that was kind of the problem, like my skirt was on fire and I couldn't get it off. I have some burns on my leg and, well, both legs, ankles, and a little bit on my hands. And uh, my butt, it's so gross. It's like a big hunk of raw ham. That's what the back of my leg looks like. Because it burned the skin off, you know, in places. In some places it's, like on my fingers. See how they're white? So those are like the first degree burns, I guess, on my fingers, you know, trying to get the skirt off and everything, and then, you know, second degree burns were. It's a mess. This happened yesterday. I'll probably be going home tomorrow. I have to see the burn surgeon before I can go, so he can determine whether or not I would need skin grafts. But I can tell you right now, I am not having surgery. I'm not going to have skin grafts. I'm just not. I don't think the burns are deep enough for that, to warrant that. I know I'm not a burn surgeon, but I also don't have insurance, so I'm not having surgery. And that's the one big stressor for me right now, uh, more so than the pain and the scarring and the gross raw ham appearance to my legs. It's, yeah, there's gonna be a big hospital bill coming, and this is why people need health insurance, and I don't have it. So that's been stressing me out, like, massively. I feel like I've really fucked up Dumpsterinos and, you know, in terms of bringing this huge hospital bill into our family budgeting situation. <laughs> I guess it's a good thing we're frugal, huh? So, that's what I've been up to. What have you guys been up to? We have snow here. You know, I haven't had cable at home for a few years now. So, um, TV here in the hospital. I found Marathon of the Office. It's actually Super Bowl Sunday as I'm filming this. I took a walk with the physical therapist and that was fine. I can walk fine. They say I need to eat a lot because you have to have good nutrition to heal the wound and grow new skin and everything. But I just don't have any appetite. I mean, I actually feel a little sick to my stomach. It might be because I didn't get any sleep last night whatsoever. I have like a IV, and if I bend my arm, the alarm, well, I'm not going to keep doing it until it goes off, this alarm goes off, so that just kind of kept me awake all night, which kind of sucked, and I think the nausea is from lack of sleep, so I'm not really wanting to eat the uh, food too much, which for me is really unusual because I'm a total food addict. I have fruit, oops, for breakfast, this is an orange wedge. For breakfast, they brought pancakes and scrambled eggs, and I was, there was just like no way. I just, so I said, could I have just a little bit of fruit, and kind of like a lighter breakfast. In terms of being vegan and diet restrictions and everything, that's out the window when I'm in the hospital. Once I feel like I can eat, I'll eat whatever they bring me. Like, you bring me food that I didn't have to make myself, I'll eat the food. I just don't feel hungry. So, it was pretty scary, Dumpsterinos. And I'm hoping at some point my brain just blocks out the whole thing. But I remember it quite clearly now, so I have a feeling that might not happen. We, uh, of course, called 911. Like, when I noticed the skin had all burned off the back of my legs, I said to Frugal Daddy, like, please call 911. Like, I have to go to the hospital. And I was right. So, oh my gosh, so many people came. First the police officer arrived at the house, and then the ambulance people, and then more police, and then the fire department. A lot of fire department. And when the firemen came through the front gate in the front yard, they left it open. So both dogs ran away. And Frugal Daddy had to go find the dogs in the snow as they're trying to, you know, get me onto a stretcher. They brought me to Philly, which is about a 40-minute drive from where we live in New Jersey, uh, to this, this hospital that has a trauma unit. Um, and I'll tell you, it was crazy. When I, um, when I got here and they brought me into, like, the emergency room trauma area, there had to be a dozen people in there waiting for me. And like really waiting for me, like just standing around waiting for me to be wheeled in, which was like a little bit intimidating, a little off-putting. But I guess they work in teams, you know, because while I was down there, I was getting ready to be brought up to the ICU. And um, 
I knew I, I knew that there was somebody coming in with an esophageal rupture because I heard a phone call come in from the ambulance. And so they had this announcement on the overhead, like, you know, Team A to the trauma bay or whatever, and this whole, like, swarm of people came. So I guess they work in these big teams. I was fairly scantily clad at this point anyway, but of course they take all your clothes off. I guess they have to check everywhere for burns. So I'm just, like, laying there stark naked with, like, 15 people around me. And I just closed my eyes and said to myself, I'm not here. You all can deal with this nudity and all this, like, I'm just like, I'm not here. And then, as much as they were all there, all of a sudden, they were all gone. And I was like, that's kind of rude. Nobody said goodbye. And I was left with two nurses who dressed the wounds and did an amazing job. Everybody's so nice. They did such a good job. They're really gentle. They have, everybody has a really good bedside manner. Well, some of the doctors do, some don't. But the nurses are all fabulous. Physical therapists are great. Everybody's great. They dressed the wounds. And uh, I had a lot of medication in me at that point because I, I, I could not have withstood that just, you know, without heavy-duty med medication. Yeah, so I'm up in the ICU. I'm probably going to go home tomorrow. I, like I said, I have to see the burn surgeon. I shudder to think what the bill's going to be. I'll let you all know. i have a follow-up on that. I was about to do a peanut butter cookie video when all this happened so I'll be making peanut butter cookies soon for y'all I have an amazing recipe I mean it's very basic and simple but it's, it's really good so I hope you guys are well they just brought lunch Dumpstrinos it's a decent sized uh, looks like Caesar salad with chicken on it and cheese and I think I can easily pick off the chicken and the cheese so that's good they were telling me before how important it is to eat. You need to get a lot of calories and nutrition in so your body can heal and all that. Did I mention that before? I don't know. And I just haven't had an appetite, but I'm beginning to a little bit now. I mean, salad, a little exciting. I texted my older daughter to, to let her know what had happened because she's away at the moment in another country. And I said, you know, legs, ankles, blah, 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 burns, but no burns on my torso or face. And she goes, oh, thank God you didn't burn your face. It's your moneymaker. That cracked me up. That's my moneymaker. It's also snowing like crazy. It's been going for hours. I've been wearing gumstrinos and fluistas. It's now the morning of the third day that I'm here at the hospital. I got a couple hours of sleep. The nurse just came in and gave me my heparin shot, which is a blood thinner, and changed my IV bag. I'm supposed to see the burn surgeon at some point today. I'm probably get to go home. Oh, excuse me, I feel a little nauseated. I feel like the painkiller for the burn causes headaches. All right, I'll let you guys know what the doctor said. Hang in there. Okay, update for you, Dumpsterinos. I came in over the weekend, so, you know, things are slow on the weekend. Like, you don't have all the same doctors around to evaluate. So it's Monday morning, and the burn team came around, and I met with the burn surgeon, and I was very much opposed. Like, I'm not going to have surgery. I'm not going to need surgery. I can't afford surgery. There's not going to be surgery. The burn surgeon said there's going to be surgery. I have third-degree burns on the back of my thigh, and I've got skin grafts. So that's going to be on Wednesday. So I'm going to be here for a little while. This is why my dad always told me you don't get a job to earn money. You get a job to have health insurance. And we all know that was correct. And we all knew I was taking a big risk when I quit my state job with the good benefits and the health insurance to be a full-time YouTuber. I don't have health insurance right at the moment. I did part of last year, but it was so expensive. And the deductible was so outrageous that it just it wasn't covering anything. And it was really only going to be useful for situations like this. Because when they said surgery today, you know in my mind I was like, well, that bill's just quadrupled now. I, I told Frugal Daddy, when you come to pick me up, just bring the deed for the house. Don't bother to clean the house up. We're just going to turn the house over to them. They can clean it up and do what they want with it. But I'm hoping that they'll let me come up with a payment plan where I will just send a set amount in every month for the rest of my life. 
and beyond. I mean, I want to pay them. I don't want to walk away from a bill like that, of course. I just don't know how I'll ever earn the money to do it. They have me on Oxy, so I'm very comfortable in terms of the burn pain. I tell you, my low-level headache is bothering me more than the, than the burn pain right now. I was nauseated earlier. I did throw up. That was not fun. But I feel better now. I'm waiting for dinner to arrive. I'm catching up on some Netflix things. It's, you know, it's pretty boring here in the hospital. And I'm not going to have visitors. Um, I mean, kids can't visit. So, and Frugal Daddy can't just, like, leave them and come visit without them. So, I guess I'll, I'll just see Frugal Daddy when he picks me up with the deed in one hand and my sweatpants in the other. Because I don't have any clothes to wear home right now. I'm glad I grabbed a blanket from home because I have it here and it's a nice warm fuzzy blanket because hospital blankets are for shit. It's just like a thick sheet. Like, it's not a good blanket. And I go from, sorry, my cord's all twisted here. I have like, what? I have wires sticking out of me all over the place. I have IV and the pulse thing and the oxygen thing and all the heart monitors and all that craziness. I go from being like super, super hot to super cold. There were nursing students here today doing their externships, and when they have nursing students, they send them to people like me, people who need to walk around a little bit, but have to have somebody with them to walk, but they want to keep you mobile, and we're getting there. Hang in there, frugalistas. See you soon. Hi, Dumpsterinos. It's Tuesday morning now, so it's day four. I got here Saturday. Surgery's tomorrow. I should have filmed my breakfast for you before I ate it. I had a fruit, yogurt granola parfait, part of a corn muffin. I always order the wrong food. You have to order it like a day ahead. I don't know. Yesterday afternoon when I ordered breakfast, I thought fruit parfait sounded good, but now I wish I'd ordered a hot breakfast. I got up early this morning and I did a couple laps around the floor because they want you to walk so you don't get a blood clot. And then I had the breakfast, which I'm not happy with. And then I met with a physical therapist. And we walked a little bit more and did some stretches and walked up and down stairs a little bit to meet with me again after the scan graft. I keep asking to talk to somebody about the whole money situation and the bill and the lack of insurance. And, um, you know, the medical side, the nurses and doctors are like, oh, yeah, yeah, they'll figure that out, which is easy for them to say. They just want to, you know, cure your physical ailments. But like, I, don't, I don't even care about the physical ailments right now. I'm concerned about paying this bill. And I keep thinking my father is watching down over me saying, I told you you needed health insurance. I'm going to ask for someone from pastoral care to come visit too. Just because like, I, don't, I don't have visitors and it's just really boring just to have someone to talk to. You get to a point in life where all you think like, okay, so things are going okay all of a sudden, like things are good. And then everything falls apart. And I wasn't even at a point in life where things were good. Actually, things were shitty and now they're shitty. I wish I could go live to talk to you guys. I can't figure out how to do it on my phone or on my iPad. This is the little banana they gave me on my lunch tray yesterday. Have we not seen far superior things come out of a dumpster? Kind of makes me think this came out of a dumpster. Sorry about all my tissues. I had a COVID test up my nose into my eyeball and there's been a lot of blood and snot coming out. It's about 4.20 in the afternoon now. The anesthesiologist came by to, you know, ask questions for the surgery tomorrow. There were no issues. The nutritionist said I need to eat more. You need a lot of protein. You need a lot of fluids, I guess, when you have a burn. They've given me medicine for the nausea, so that's not really a problem at the moment. Just really tired and bored and lonely and sad. And still nobody has come to talk to me about billing or anything. Well, I'm waiting for dinner, Dumpsterinos. As soon as one meal finishes, I'm just thinking about the next. Like, oh, that was good. Now I want more, more, more. When's the next meal coming? It's like the only thing that breaks up the day. And I'm hungry. And I want my dinner. Want to know about burn treatment? It's all about silver, apparently. They use this stuff called silvadine. It's this white cream. They slather it. And I mean like slather. Like they dig in and Blob it all over the burns and then they wrap it up. And that has to get changed pretty frequently. But yesterday, they put this other kind of dressing on my legs. I think there's a piece of it over here. Let me show you. This stuff. And uh, I'm sure it has silver in the name. 
silver insulation. So you peel off the plastic and it's sticky under there and the sticky side goes to your skin and I think this doesn't have to be changed for three whole days. But when I went to the bathroom just now, see I have like this mesh tube top kind of thing around my hips to hold that dressing in place. Even though it's sticky and sticks to your skin, it doesn't stay on. And of course, like you know, anybody who's ever worn, well I've never worn a tube top, but control top pantyhose or a girdle, and you know you put it on and everything's all like smooth and tucked in and the girdle's in control. But as the day wears by, your stomach wants to take control again and makes everything kind of roll in the wrong direction. So it happens with the hip tube top too. So it was kind of rolled and bunched in the wrong place and I went to the bathroom and the dressing fell off so the nurse just had to come in and put another one on. And earlier today I went to the bathroom and one of the, these things, one of these things, had come loose and was kind of hanging off the back of my leg and I peed on it. Yep. I know, TMI, it's that kind of video. I have a problem, can you come help me? I peed on my burn dressing. You know with burns there's a lot of oozing too. Did you all know that? There's an oozing situation which is apparently perfectly normal. Oh yeah, we expect all that oozing. I mean, it's like oozing. All right, Dumpstrinos, it's quarter of five. It's the morning of the surgery. They just came and took blood. I guess they're gonna come get me for surgery at about 6.30 and I'll I guess I'll just sit here and try to rest until then. I have to say, I am really terrified. Hopefully I'll see you on the other side. I wish they could just put something in my IV right now and knock me out and then I just wake up again here in like seven or eight hours and it's just all done. My hair. My hair just keeps getting prettier day by day. Surgery's done, dump strainers. I just got back up to my room about noon and I've never been in so much pain in my life and they have given me so much pain medication and hopefully eventually something's gonna work it's unbelievable I guess the surgery went well I don't know nobody's really told me I'm just gonna sit here like a lump for a while and hopefully I can check in with you guys later but I'm so glad it's over obviously I lived through it that was the big concern death how are you guys doing you guys hanging in there so, Dumpsterinos, it's about 4.30 now, and the doctor just came to check in on me. And, you know, what I know, you get to know. He said it went fine. Not that he's going to tell me he botched it. And apparently he took two strips of skin in the front of my thigh that are 3 inches by 12 inches. So for a total of 6 inches by 12 inches, which would be 72 square inches. 72 square inches in two strips of thigh flesh from the front and then grafted it onto the back and used a couple staples apparently. I wasn't too excited about hearing staples because that means staple removal and I know they tell you that's not going to hurt. That's going to hurt. When Frugal Daddy had his hernia operation he was cut from like here to here and he had like 30 staples in him and they were big. You know when you lose a cat and you're stapling missing cat signs all over town to the telephone poles and you use like your big staple gun? These surgical staples are bigger than that and they told him it wasn't there when they took them out and every single one. He was holding my hand and like with every one he's like squeezing harder and harder and like I'm going down, I'm on the floor, you're, it's, you're hurting him. I'm massively relieved that this surgery is over like I'm just on a like a happy high now just have it behind me because I was so scared. He said that the burns on the ankles, they rewrapped and they look like they're healing and they're doing okay. There's my great and glorious bandaged thigh. I should have asked them to take pictures during the surgery, but they were probably busy. Healthy with the graft. These dressings, I guess, stay on for five days. My butt hurts a little bit, which is unfortunate because I'm sitting on it. Last night I tried to sleep on my stomach for the first time because, you know, the worst of everything's on the back of my legs. I was so tangled up in all these cords, like it's, you know, you all know from being in the hospital, it's like, there's cords everywhere. Just, I think the earliest I can probably go home is Friday. Alright, dumb strands, there's my cute little feet. So I had to put on the fun hospital slippers to use the commode, I needed to go potty. And so they put the slippers on me, even though I only took one step away from the bed. But the thing is, like, I can get to this foot to get the slipper off, because, see, look, I can bend my leg. This leg, I can't. And the skin graft kind of goes up farther on my butt than I realized it was going to, so I'm, I'm 
you know, at a little bit of a loss for uh, flexibility here at the moment. And I can't reach it, so I'm going to see if I can get my sock off by using my gripper lizard toes from the other foot. I know, you're like, um, can you just ring for the nurse and ask? I could, but you don't want to bother them for things like, I can't get my sock off. Because I bother them for plenty of things, like, I'm in incredible pain and this gauze seems to be all bloody. But can I reach? Oh, oh god, oh god. I can, wait, I can. Reach, reach. Alright, well now it's anticlimactic, isn't it? Ugh. I haven't bathed since Saturday morning before all this happened. And then I found that they give you these little Purell wipes on your meal trays, you know, like a little wet one to wipe your hands off. So I'm using these to wash my armpits. Good little hospital hygiene tip there for you, Dumpsterinos. Good morning, Dumpsterinos. It's now Thursday. Battling a headache as always. I got some sleep overnight. You know how it is if you've been in the hospital. All you need is sleep. Not I mean not all, but what you want a lot of is sleep and you can never sleep well in hospitals. They're always waking you up to get your vital signs. I'll show you my breakfast. I had some strawberries in this little cup. I ate those. There's my juice. Scrambled eggs and a piece of toast. I'm not trying at all. As I said before, I'm not worrying about being vegan or anything while I'm here. It's, uh, it's difficult to really get any food at all that's okay. And I'm not picky about food at all. Look, I'm the person who loves airplane food because it comes in a little compartmented tray. I don't know, the food's just like not great and it's hard enough just to kind of put a vegetarian meal together. I mean, the only really vegetarian thing they offer is like vegetable lasagna, which I absolutely do not want. I have like a little stockpile of insurers building up because they bring them all the time and I don't drink them because look at that, 350 calories. I think the first ingredient is corn syrup. I mean, that's just gross. I know, 20 grams of protein, which is a lot for such a small little container and it has a lot of carbohydrates. I know there's a lot in there, but I don't want to just be drinking fortified corn syrup. That's just gross. They keep telling me I need all this extra protein, but um, I have eggs. There's the view out my window. It's a parking garage. That big window on the right is actually where an elevator goes up. So if I'm in my, if I, hap, if I happen to be in my room at night with the light on and I happen to be standing up like changing my gown or just you know dancing around naked the way you do and somebody goes up in the elevator like they can see it's a free show and that's what I'm here for one thing I'll say them three knows I've had any coffee since I've been in here and it's been whatever since Saturday so maybe I'm gonna detox from my caffeine addiction I don't really drink a ton of coffee but it wouldn't be a bad thing to just get off of it entirely I mean just to wake up in the morning and maybe have a big glass of lemon water instead of coffee. Seems like that would be healthier, right? You always have to look for the silver lining. You burn yourself, you go to the hospital, you have skin grafts, but you get over your coffee addiction. Still haven't pooped, by the way. But I'm plenty gassy, so there's that. Okay, Dumpsterinas, the doctors just came by doing their rounds. I think they're going to send me home on Monday. I thought I was going to go home tomorrow, but I guess it's going to be Monday because um, these bandages on my leg I have to stay on for five days, so they're going to keep me in and then change the bandages on Monday. And Assuming everything looks fine, which I'm sure it will, they're going to send me home. So we talked a lot about medication. And you know what's weird is there's no antibiotics. Like, wouldn't you think with a big burn like that and then a skin graft wound. I mean, you know, now the front of my thigh is like this giant open wound to regrow skin. Like, wouldn't you think you would need an antibiotic? Just, but no. No. Yeah, we were talking about the size of the graft, and I was saying I was surprised, like, how much bigger it is than I thought it was going to be. And they were like, well, yeah, you burnt, like, 10% of your body. Yes? Oh, hi. Come on in. I don't mean to interrupt. Sorry about that. That was the dietitian coming in. Drink the Ensures, at least one a day. So I've tried the chocolate one. It's pretty tasty. I mean, chocolate flavored high fructose corn syrup would be pretty tasty, wouldn't it? Ensure. She's like, people don't believe me, but it, and I was like, oh no, I totally believe you. Let food be thy medicine. I think Aristotle said that. I mean, like, I know it's all about nutrition. Of course, your body needs to bring in the nutrients and the energy. She's so skinny. I just have to say, it's a dietitian who's incredibly slender. Wish the insurer would do something about the wrinkles. So I just went for a walk with a tech. 
so I'm in a lot of pain now. She has long legs. I know she wasn't trying to walk fast, but she just is a faster walker. And uh, just as I was getting back to the room, the lunch lady was coming, so I was very excited. Yay, yay lunch! I ordered a fruit platter, which I've had before, and it's nice. But she said the computers were down, so they didn't know what anybody ordered, so no orders could be fulfilled, so they brought me this instead. Pizza. And a little salad and a fruit cup. I ate some. I just, it's not bad. Well, it is kind of bad. You know they're not making any of this food here. It all looks like stuff that's made somewhere else and then is brought over and they're just heating it up here. Nothing's made with love. How are we supposed to heal if there's no love in our food? Oh, and today's banana. I mean, you've seen the bananas I get out of dumpsters. This is so small. I know it's hard to tell scale. There, there's a packet of salad dressing. Can you see how this banana is so tiny? I don't mean to make it feel bad. I'm not trying to shame it. I'm going to eat it. I'm sure it's fine, but um, you guys want to get a new shipment in anytime soon? There's no love in this banana. See that? It's a little tiny piece of paper. I just pulled that out of my nose. Right there. Right there. Like, how long has that been in there? Where did that come from? Why didn't somebody tell me? The nurses and techs are in and out all day. They should have said, lady, you got some kind of like chunk of paper up your nose. Nice. All right, it's Friday morning and this is breakfast. I um, I didn't order anything specific. I figured they would just bring whatever generic and I lifted the, the lid and I got this blob of eggs, obviously made with love, and this piece of bread, which is not even toasted. It's, it's warm because it was sitting on the eggs, but just a piece of bread and eggs. I'm not complaining. I love hospital food. It's just, it's awful. It's just awful. They're really, really pushing the insurers. One of the nurses said to me something yesterday about how there's like this special burn menu. Like you can get milkshakes. Like why aren't you ordering from the burn menu? And I was like, what burn menu? Nobody told me there's a burn menu. A special milkshake menu for burn patients would be really valuable information to have been told earlier on. Friday, I had my breakfast and I'm going to do my little bird bath now. There's my basin of water and soap and washcloths. I stink. I think I got more sleep last night than than ever before here. I, I'm, I'm going to say a good five to six hours maybe in just like different chunks added up. That's pretty good. We're going for the artistic filming here. I just thought, you know, it's fun to see all the hospital stuff. It's so exciting. It's like being on Grey's Anatomy. Here's a family visitor lounge, I guess. Nobody in here, obviously. It's hard not having visitors. It's just so boring. That's our view from the visitor lounge. Oh, it's nice and cool here. There's like, I'm so hot. There's a little cool burst of air. Yep, yep, yep. I like that flowery mural down there. I love stuff like that. I want to paint that on the side of my car. This is the final stretch. It's a long, deserted hallway. If I fall down here, I'm kind of like, I'm not going to fall. I'm fine. There's railings to hold on to. See? But this is, this is where you're on your own. No man's land. The rest of the way around the floor, you're just walking through other wards and, you know, lots of nurses and people's rooms and stuff. I mean, see, there are people there. If I fell, I, somebody would help me. I'd probably get myself up. Look, I can escape. I could go down that elevator if I wanted to. Here we go. This is like the inner, ooh, like inner courtyard, I guess, in the hospital. Kind of fancy. So when I'm doing my walk, that's like the route I'm going all the way around there. Kind of seems like wasted space, doesn't it? So those three guys up ahead of me. I just heard one of them say, there's a lot of stool in that rectum, right? I was like, oh, they're talking about poop. That's my kind of conversation. Not that I've pooped in a week and a half myself. Ah, uh, commodes. I know thee well. All right, here we are coming back where we started. I'm back in my room and I'm exhausted. It takes a bit to get settled here. I mean, they'll obviously come help you if you ask. I just don't like to ask. Saturday morning, my eighth day here. Here's breakfast, French toast, eggs, cereal, milk, juice, syrup. When I first saw that, I thought it said beautiful syrup. And I thought, eh, I bet you are beautiful. 
I'm going to assume that's coffee. I haven't had any coffee since I've been in here. I'm totally off caffeine now. Another bleak day of hopelessness and misery. Hi, I'm Strina as well. It's day eight here. I had stories I wanted to tell you yesterday after my walk, but I was really exhausted when I got back from it, and I just kind of never drummed up the energy. One thing that's really hitting home to me here while I'm in the hospital is the emotional toll of physical injuries. It's, it's not something you can underestimate. And it's just something I'm sure in the past I've underestimated in how I have interacted, I think, with, I mean, I'm trying to think of who I've ever interacted with that was really injured, but people who are going through medical issues, and um, the emotional side is just as, well, I don't know if it's as significant, I don't know, but it's there, it's, it, two nights ago, my night nurse comes in, my night nurse, but the night nurse, and um, <clears throat> I've never had her before, she didn't know me at all, and they have these little, I guess they're like, it's like an iPhone, maybe it is a phone, it's a little thing, they scan your wrist badge, and they scan all your medications, and all your prescriptions and stuff are in there for them to see, so she's looking at that, kind of talking about my medications, and she's she's not getting it right, she's not like up to date, she's kind of say like, well no, that was the first day I did that, and then they gave me this, and then, like she's just not, you know, she's not kind of up to speed yet, and um, she's been in the room like 30 seconds, and she, she comes, this was like the day after my surgery, I think, and she's like, well I don't know why you're still here, they could have sent you home, um, and then you just come back to have your bandages undone, and I was like, bitch, you don't know me, you, you, have, you don't know what's wrong with me, you haven't seen my wounds, you haven't looked at my bandages, you can't even fucking figure, excuse me, you can't even figure out my medications correctly that are written on this little phone thing in front of you, and you're going to tell me you think I should have been discharged when my skin graft surgeon thinks I should still be here? Yeah. So then I started thinking, She's the one who's going to murder me. She's the one who's going to inject something into my IV and kill me. She's going to be one of those angel of death nurses, I bet. Most of the staff here is amazing, I have to say. Like, these young nurses, this is a really physically demanding job, I think, being a floor nurse. I mean, they're just running around all the time. And in terms of obesity in America, not with this nursing staff. These girls are trim and fit and energetic. So then yesterday I was talking to my morning nurse and she was asking me what hospital they brought me to before they brought me here and I said nowhere, they brought me straight here and she said oh well that's um, that's appropriate because <laughs> it's a burn hospital. She was telling me that if, if um, she said that with the size of my third degree burn on my leg is the, I mean, the doctor had said that it was like 10%. It's like 10% of my body, 10% of my skin was burned like that. So she said that in and of itself warrants going to a burn hospital. But she said that if you had no other burns, just like nothing else going on, but if you burn your genitals at all, private burns, that that always warrants going straight to the burn hospital. I just thought that was interesting information. I didn't really know it, but I think you all should know that. If you burn your genitals, you don't just go to a regular hospital, you're going to a burn hospital, even if nothing else on your body is burned. Reminds me of a time this girl in college ended up with burns from hot fudge. I think she just ended up in the school infirmary, though. I don't think she ended up in a burn hospital, but... Don't put boiling hot fudge on yourself. Stick with the whipped cream. I just can't wait till the day comes where I could take a bath. I could just submerge myself. I'm healed enough to just take a nice bath. I smell like a family of skunks running through an onion field. I got some good news and I got some bad news, dumpstrinos. Good news first. Finally, after about nine days, I finally moved my bowels. The bad news is that, well, just like at home, I've clogged up the hospital toilet, so now I have to 
ask for maintenance to come up with a plunger. Here's my Saturday night dinner, Dumpsterinos. We've got chicken parm, pasta, and broccoli. It actually looks pretty good. I feel like there's rice mixed in with the broccoli. I'm not sure what's going on. And I have ice cream. Vanilla flavored fat. Ooh, fat free ice cream. Vanilla flavored. I wonder what's in there. <laughs> well, there it is. I'm gonna tell you, it looks a lot better than it tastes, but. Yeah, I just didn't think I had a spoon. Oh, but okay. I do, I was, but I do, but I... Okay, so you're okay? I'm good, yeah, but I'm thankful for it. Good morning, Dumpsterinos. It is day nine, and I'm supposed to go home tomorrow, so I'm pretty excited. <sighs> Any news to report? Oh, wow, that was bright. Let me turn that back off. It's the bathroom. I washed my hair this morning. I'm very excited about it. I know, it probably doesn't even look any different. And it's just that it smelled so bad. It was just gross. Like that combination of greasy dirty hair mixed with burned hair smell. I'm very very happy to have washed it because it just makes me feel better. So here's the little bathroom. So I took that chair out of the shower and it just sat there next to the toilet and I sat in the chair and just kind of leaned my head way into the shower area and used the you know the shower extension hose thing. I washed my hair and then I did my bird bath in the sink and I feel like a new woman. I know how much worse this could have been so I know that like I'm lucky to have hair and a face. When I go home tomorrow I want to I want to be like as kind of normal presenting as possible for the kids so they think I'm okay you know I want to seem as okay as possible you know because like I said they saw me on fire and, and and they got to see me briefly in the emergency room, um, and um, of course I was all like f fake perky for them. I was like, oh hi guys, I'm fine now, everything's good, they're taking great care of me, I'm just going to stay overnight, and they've got me all bandaged up, I feel great, everything's fine. But Frugal Daddy told me later, like, they didn't believe me. So this morning, it was the first time someone came in and... I didn't wake up like instantaneously like the doctor came in a doctor I don't even know who this was around six and usually like I'm awake instantly because I'm not really asleep but I was dreaming I was having this weird dream and um, so when he knocked on the door I just kind of incorporated that into the dream and it took me a little while to wake up so okay whatever he comes in he said how are you feeling I said fine how are you he said fine he said I heard you had a bowel movement I said yes I did. It was very exciting. I'm sure everybody's talking about it. It's the talk of the town. And he said, so how are the legs doing? And I said, I don't, I don't know. You tell me. Like, how are they doing? And he kind of took a look at my ankles, which are bandaged up. So he's looking at bandages on ankles. And he goes, okay, well, we'll see you tomorrow. And he left. And I was like, dude, that was worth waking me up for? You were in here literally like one minute. And I had to wake up for that. So I'm going to go for my little morning walk. I'm supposed to walk like three times a day around here. And I usually do it once. Because I'm like totally wiped out. After, after one time around I go and I start to feel flexible and I feel good. But if I go around two or three times, it's like I'm just... Like my heart is pounding. I'm out of breath. And I'm not walking fast, mind you. I'm hobbling slowly. But breakfast was total raisin bran. And a couple chunks of pineapple. And a couple of boiled eggs. Don't even try to ever be vegetarian in a hospital, let alone vegan. Like, it, you can't. The food, I, I, you know what, I, they don't make this food here, I'm sure. This is like contracted from some company who brings it in, and I have a feeling it's the same company that brings food to prisons. I, I don't think the prisoners get as good food as this. I mean, I think the prisoners are probably on like the pewter plan, and the hospital's on like the bronze plan, I'm thinking. It's like, wow, I thought I was a bad cook. Like, institutional food's even worse than my cooking. So many of you guys have reached out because you kind of noticed that we haven't put up videos in a while and I really appreciate that because it's really sweet. I appreciate it and it makes me feel guilty because I don't like people to have to go out of their way for me or worry about me or think about me or anything but you know I, I really do appreciate it so anyway I'm going for my walk now. Okay there's Sunday lunch guys. This looks like the best thing I've gotten so far. The vegetables look really fresh. It's like this little vegetable platter with a blob of chicken salad. I should have ordered some dressing. I didn't really know what this was going to entail. It would be nice to have some 
dressing for dipping. I also got french fries, which of course I ate first, and they look really good, don't they? I don't want to be a complainer, but no, they're terrible. But not that that kept me from eating them, because they are still french fries, but... But look at this. I mean, this is beautiful. Them strainos I've turned into my grandmother. The man came in to take the food tray away, and I saw that he had this dark mark, like, that big, on his arm. And I said, oh, is that a birthmark? And he said, no, that's a scar from a motorcycle accident. So he was telling me about his motorcycle accident and how he skydives. And my reactions, I, I just, in the back of my head, I kept thinking, what are you doing? You're acting like Nana. Because everything he says, I'm going like, oh, oh my, oh, be careful. Oh, I need you to be safe. Oh, you must give up riding motorcycles. I was like, who am I? I'm channeling Nana. Day 10 dumpsterinos. In a couple of hours, they're supposed to come unwrap the bandages from surgery and take a look at everything and then rewrap it and send me home. I'm so excited to leave. I cannot wait to get out of here. I miss the frugal babies so much, my babies. And the pets and frugal daddy. I want to get out of here. I've been up since like five, waiting. I'm ready. I brushed my teeth. Come unwrap me. They're here. It's time. It's time to get unwrapped like a little burrito. Unwrap me. Okay, the dressings all came unwrapped. I wanted to film the whole procedure for you all, but it's against hospital policy. I couldn't film, but there was a nursing student here who took some pictures, which hopefully you'll really, really enjoy. The doctors seemed pleased. They thought the graft looked great. To me, it looks like just a giant slab of rotten meat. They gave me Dilaudid right prior to unwrapping the bandages from surgery. And I can't say it didn't work. I can say it felt like it didn't work, but I mean, I don't, I don't know because I don't know how painful would have everything been if I hadn't had the medication. You know, it might have been 10 times worse, so it might have worked, but it was still the most intensely painful thing I have ever gone through. Unbelievable. There were staples on the back of my leg, you know, that were kind of helping hold the graft in place. So them coming out didn't feel great. And like all the, the wrappings and the mesh and the bandages and everything, like they stick, you know, that's like, and I feel like they're ripping scabs off to like pull this, oh God, it was awful, them strainers. You gotta love people who can be in the medical field. Like, thank God for them. Where would we be? Done, it's changed. I don't have to do anything with my current bandages. I mean, I'm all rebandaged now. I don't have to do anything at home other than I can't get anything wet. It's Monday. I will then go back to see the doctor on Friday and they'll change the dressings again. And hopefully it'll start to look a little bit better. But I think it's a long road for the healing. I think it takes a while. And of course, as you get older, it takes longer to heal for everything. You know, like the cat scratches me on the face. And, you know, 20 years ago, that would have healed in a couple days. And now it'll be like two weeks that I'm going to have like the cat scratch fever scab. I'm just kind of sitting here now waiting for the discharge paperwork and I don't know, whatever else. I wonder when the bill shows up. Soon we're going to be back to dumpster diving and, and uh, there's a Frugal Daddy haircut video that we did right before all this happened that you'll get to see. I know that's exciting. And there might be a Frugal Daddy giving me a haircut video. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking with us. I think we have a GoFundMe thing up for the hospital bills. I, I feel very torn about that. It's very uncomfortable for me to ever ask anybody for money or for help. I just... I don't like that, but I can't let my pride 
I don't, I don't even know if it is pride, because I'm not really, like, what am I proud of? I'm not a proud person. Like, what am I be proud of? But I, I, whatever it is, I don't want that to stand in the way of getting help, because it's, it's my family that's going to end up suffering, you know? Like, it's, it's, um, I just don't want the bill to have such a negative impact on, like, the kids and their future. And so I'm willing um, to ask for help, but I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's hard to have a frugality channel and then ask anybody to give you money like that. So I don't like that. And that's it. We'll be going home soon. There's my last hospital lunch. The fruit and cottage cheese combo platter. Just waiting for frugal daddy to come get me now. I made it home, dumpsterinos. It's like they're surrounding me, like I'm the baby Jesus. I will tell you, I was worried about the German Shepherd puppy coming home, jumping all over me. And um, she's been really gentle. Like she sniffed my leg like crazy because it was like a lot of bloody maxi pads just strapped to my leg. Like it's blood and flesh. And I thought she's gonna eat me in my sleep. But she, it's like she senses that I was hurt, and she's she's being like so gentle. It's so cute because she's so big and rambunctious. I think it's gonna take me a little longer to get back in the swing of things than I thought, because this healing process takes longer than, like, I'll get off my hip. Like when I had my C-section, and they're like, oh yeah, that's major abdominal surgery. But they have you up and walking, and discharged from the hospital, and toting around a forty-pound breast pump on your own, like two days after they take children out of your body. And I don't know, I know I was off painkillers in a week. I mean, that healed pretty quickly. This is not kind of like that, but anyway, I'm home and it feels amazing to be home. I just sent Frugal Daddy off to the grocery store with a list. Honest to God, he'll starve me to death. As if the food in the hospital wasn't bad enough, which honestly, it was pretty wretched. It's worse, it's worse under Frugal Daddy's care. Like he will starve me to death. I did lose six pounds in the hospital. So that's exciting. Even though I ate, ow, I think I, I feel like I ate a lot. Um, obviously no snacking. Thank you to all of you who've made it to the end of the video.